Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we talk about metal roofing clips, how they're important in engineered systems, and how to choose the right one for your project. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals. It's great to be back today. I've got Jeff Hawk, Adam Mazzella, and Lori reynolds Morrow on the channel with me today. We're talking about metal roofing clips, how they're important in engineered systems, and how to choose the right one for your project. So uh, let's talk about clips for a little bit, guys. Tell me a little bit about the different kinds of clips and their uses. Well, we've got a bunch of clips out here today. Not all of them are uh, indicative of what we offer, and, and not all of them are going to be what we're going to talk about today. But um, we can start by talking about mechanical lock clips. Mechanical lock clips are, are kind of fall into three categories, um, at least three that we're going to address. You've got your uh, fixed mechanical lock clip. Uh, this type of clip is going to be fixed. Um, meaning that once it's seamed, that panel is not going anywhere and it's also fixed to the deck. So that system is not going to be floating, sliding, anything like that. Uh, the other one is a sliding or expansion clip. This clip can slide back and, back and forth. Uh, you see a couple of different styles here, uh, same concept. And the third type is a floating clip. Uh, floating clip is, uh, in our engineering, typically something that is used in open framing. has an offset, so it's keeping the panel off of the deck. Um, and again, it, it typically is something that you can have expansion and contraction uh, with your metal roofing system. Let's dive into these a little bit deeper. Tell me some characteristics about each type and kind of how they're used. Well, the first clip Adam talked about is a fixed clip. You know, this is going to be on a mechanical lock system, as he mentioned. Obviously, the main difference is that it's fixed, and this doesn't expand and contract, as he said. This would be used on mechanical lock systems typically less than 25 feet long. After 20, 25 feet, that's when your panels can actually start expanding, contraction, uh, expanding and contracting, and you're going to need movement in the clip itself in order to avoid some problems with your panel. Um, the main problem that you'll see if your panel's fixed and it's in a longer panel run is you're going to get oil canning. So typically on a shorter run, you can get away with using a fixed clip. On a longer run, you're going to want to switch over to an expansion clip to help avoid oil canning issues and let the panel move freely. Expansion clips, obviously, just as the name says, they expand. Um, these are going to be used on longer panel runs so the panel can move freely. Depending on the length of your panel determines how much movement it's going to have over the course of time based on your geographic location and temperature changes. So one of the things you want to look out for when you're dealing with an expansion clip is making sure that uh, you, there's a slot right here and this, in this case this butterfly moves within this slot. So if the butterfly is centered, you want to make sure you have enough room on each side of the center to where it can expand and contract based on how long your panel run is. Okay. Um, that's important because sometimes you get into really long panel runs or you're using different materials that might expand and contract more and you might, even though you have an expansion clip, it might not have the room to move as much as it needs to in either direction. Just talking about different materials, why we have the expansion clips up, uh, this clip right here was designed specifically for steel and its partner over here, uh, this one was used for an aluminum system. If you, as you can tell, the slot for the aluminum system is quite a bit larger because aluminum expands a lot more than steel does. So you have a lot more movement back and forth in this area than you do on the steel clip. So it provides that extra room so the panel can move freely and you know help prevent any issues uh, that arise due to thermal expansion. The most important thing when it comes to this clip selection is using a clip that's been engineered for your system. That's, that's, it's, you're not usually just going to go out and say, I want this panel system and let me pull this clip off the shelf. Yep. You know, the first thing you should do is find what clip was used in the testing and, and make sure that that's going to meet your needs. And we're going to talk about engineering a little bit later. First, let's talk about uh, floating clips for a second. Um, we don't have one here, but can you tell me a little bit more about floating clips and kind of how they're used? Okay, so a floating clip, as the name states, it floats the panel up off the roof sheathing or roof decking, whatever the case may be. 
Um, it's usually either a half inch or an inch offset, so it holds the panel up that high. You'll see them a lot on open framing systems or purlin systems um, for a couple reasons. One, it's a way to put um, blanket insulation in, um, so there's enough room for the blanket to get in blanket insulation to get in between the purlin and the panel and hold it up off the uh, the purlin, but still have a good attachment. Uh, another reason is what they call purlin chatter, where the metal panel sits directly on an open framing system and there's no ceiling and the metal panel sits there and it mm -hmm. chatters against this, um, the purlin itself. So those are, those are some of the main times that floating clip is used. It can be used over solid sheeting. Um, one of the issues with that from an installation standpoint that make it a little bit more work is now you have to accommodate for that offset in the panel. So you have to build up your eaves, your rakes, your ridges, things like that right. in order to be able to accommodate your uh, flashing details for that offset in the panel clip. A couple other characteristics about a mechanical lock. Uh, assembly A, you know, A it's a mechanical lock, which means it's going to be a 90 degree fold or a 180 degree fold. Um, you know, getting a mechanical lock system can cause some telegraphing, and what telegraphing typically is is when the clip can show through the metal, and you can actually see on the roof, you know, the the frequency of the clip in the system. Um, can be caused for a number of reasons. It could be uh, the the type of metal used for the metal panel. Uh, could be the hardness or the thickness of the metal used in the clip. Uh, could be the seamer adjusted too too much. It's typically something that is accepted uh, unless it's you know causing damage or or causing the system to be out of tolerance. So and back to uh, 90 degree versus 180 degree seam. Um, you know typically a 90 degree seam is not viewed as as strong of a system as a 180 degree seam system. Certainly 180 degrees is gonna be more weather tight, particularly at lower slopes. So we've talked about mechanical lock clips, fixed clips, expansion clips, floating clips. What about snap lock? Uh, what kind of clips does that kind of system use? So the, the main thing with a snap lock clip is you're always going to have a fixed clip. Um, and that fixed clip is going to also allow for thermal expansion and contraction. So the clip is fixed. And the panel, once it's snapped onto this clip, is going to be able to float uh, freely, uh, you know, as long as the system designed for it uh, on this clip. One thing for consideration is when you're using a fastener flange type system, that system is always going to be pinned. It doesn't use a clip. It's not floating freely. Um, so if you're looking for a system that uh, is going to be able to float freely uh, in a snap lock, Look at something with a clip and not something that, you know, just engages into the panel next to it that is pinned to the deck. So what about material? Does it matter what the clips are actually made of? Absolutely. I think that goes with the system design uh, kind of criteria. You know, what type of system, where is the system located, things like that, and other components that are going into the system. So, um, most clips you can get in a galvanized steel or a galvalume. Um, that's your, your typical base clip material. Um, other types of material would be stainless steel. You'll see that more often in you know, applications with copper or zinc or coastal applications with aluminum, uh, things like that. Um, also, I've seen clips made out of uh, the base material that they're installing. So I've seen you know, some of the, the more craftsman type mm -hmm. guys uh, installing a copper roof using uh, clips made out of copper, uh, similarly with zinc. So... Um, traditionally, though, you're going to see uh, stainless steel and uh, galvalume galvanized as your, your typical base material with clips. Only thing I'll add to that is, you know, when it comes to an expansion clip, more than likely you're going to have two different gauges, one for the base and then usually a lighter one for the, the expansion butterfly or tab itself. Um, that's pretty common across the board with most of the clips. Um, the heavier base gives you a strong attachment point and a little lighter gauge top makes it a little easier for when semen comes into play and telegraphing through. Yep. We've talked about engineered systems. Are these clips engineered? They are part of the engineered system, the roof system. And so 
as the designer and you are interviewing your metal panel manufacturers, um, you want to ask them for the engineering reports. In that report for the profiles that you're considering will be the definition, the description of the clips used in the testing. It will guide you as to the material, um, the whole description, the dimensions, and how they're laid out on the roof for the testing. And I know we're talking about just panel clips in general, but that's going to be for pretty much every component of the engineering system right. itself. Um, some people have long reports, some people have short reports. It depends. Usually you always have a long report, whether it's available all the time or not. But in that report, usually there is items that were submitted. So there's a drawing of the clip, there's a drawing of the fastener. If there's insulation, there's a data sheet on the insulation. So the report's really going to tell you exactly what it is that you need to be using, like Lori said, to make sure you're using all the products that are you know, appropriate for the system you're designing. The other thing you want to ensure when you're using engineered systems and, you know, clips or any other component is, you know, there might be multiple test standards that you have to meet, you know, for a project. So, you know, you have a UL 580 test, a ASTM 1646 air test. You want to make sure that the components used in across the board and all the test standards are the same. So to make sure that the engineering is applicable for each part of the testing requirements right. that you're asking for. So we've seen some common types of clips. Are there any other clip types that we haven't covered here today? Um, there's a lot of different clip designs. Uh, I think for snap block roofing, traditional snap block roofing, and mechanically seamed roofing, we covered a lot. Uh, the other one that you could probably mention is a batten clip, a batten lock system clip. That clip actually goes in between two panels that are butted up next to it. It's a fixed clip and then a batten cap snaps onto it, mm -hmm. covering the system and uh, keeping it watertight. Yeah, that's a great point. I think we learned a lot about clips today. We covered a lot of ground. Check us out at Sheffield Metals Online to learn more. Comment below if you have any questions. As always, subscribe to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals, and we'll catch you next time.